as we focus and as we honor our kids today, for some, they're moving into kids' church, and they're excited to be big kids in big kids' church. For some, they're moving from kids' church to youth group, and that can be scary, but also exciting. They're moving from being the big fish in the little pond to being the, the small fish in the big pond. We have those that just came up and we honored for graduating high school. And if they haven't turned 18 yet, they will soon. 18 in our culture means adulthood. It means that they can now vote. That's a scary thought. It means they can make some decisions without mom and dad. When you turn 18, you can vote. You can join without mom and dad. You can vote. You can join the military. You can donate blood. You can choose to become an organ donor. You can work full time. You can't work full time until you're 18. Um, you can play the lottery. Don't do that, but it is something you can do. It's a waste of money. You can drive late at night. You have a curfew by the state until you're 18, and now you can drive late at night until mom and dad say you can't. You can now establish your own checking account and savings account. You can purchase your own vehicle or house. You can't do that until you're 18. Did you know that? You can now buy spray paint. Don't do anything <laughs> stupid. You can't buy spray paint until you're 18. You can get married without your parents' consent. Hey, hey, listen to this. Listen to this. This is, this is so... No, there's a whole lot of things I'm not going to tell them that they can now do. Do you know because you're 18 now, you can adopt a puppy or a child? How do those things get lumped together? But in all sincerity, because you're 18, you can now legally adopt a puppy or a child. You can change your name without permission. Yeah, Tanner, they can. To the parents in the room, there's mixed emotions when your kids graduate high school. For those who have been up here to do Promotion Sunday, uh, it is difficult. It is difficult to get out because you're thinking about when you brought your child home from the hospital all the way to that time when you were ready to kick them out of your house with the, uh, the left foot of faith. Boom, get out of here. What's wrong with you? You think about all of the incredible experiences you've lived together. For some, we haven't experienced that yet. For some, we may never experience that. For some, you're sitting out there and you're like, I would never cry. Yeah, you will. I've been up here twice. I know you will. For some, our students are thinking they're an adult, but they can't even make macaroni and cheese yet. <laughs> then there's the parent who says they are an adult. I've taught and I've trained them as long as I can. Now I have to coach them. Life has been sort of practice for the first 18 years, and now they're in the game. You can give them advice. You can help them draw up plays, but they have to execute, and all you can do is sit there from the sidelines. Coaches sometimes lose their mind while players change the plays, or they don't execute the play that you drew up, or even worse, when the game is being called unfairly. You'll see a coach just screaming and arms flailing and, Technical fouls are being given, and they're yelling at the refs. That's parents when their kids graduate high school and they're considered adults. Welcome to parenting adults. When they hit the big shot, you're high-fiving, you're celebrating, and you're jumping up and down with them. When they miss that shot, or the uncertainty and unfair plays of life get in the way, you're grieving, and you're encouraging, and you're picking them up picking them up off the floor with tears in their eyes and probably in your eyes. While you didn't execute the play, you were part of the defeat or you were part of the championship. The transition to adult children and parenting adult children can be difficult. Students in the room, it's difficult for mom and dad because we evaluate everything we didn't teach you yet. All the things that we wanted to teach you. All of the things we intended to teach you. We just didn't get to it. To all the parents in the room, it's difficult for your child because they don't want to be told what to do anymore. It's difficult for mom and dad because we want to protect you from pain and suffering based on our own personal life experiences. It's difficult for the students because they want to experience life because they will never experience bumps in their road. Yeah, it's
it's okay. All of those older than 18 laugh just a little bit. So much is wrapped up in graduation and promotion as well as releasing and blessing. Today is about telling our kids how much we love them and how much we believe in them. Psalm 127, the psalmist declares this, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. This passage of scripture can be applied in so many different situations and circumstances, but I believe fits perfectly for this morning. And I want to read through it again and apply it to our kids this morning. Parents, I'm talking to you like this now. Unless the Lord helps you build your kids, you're laboring in vain. Unless the Lord guards them, you're staying awake in vain. Personally, I can go to sleep when my kids aren't home yet because it's not going to do me any good to stay awake. But my wife doesn't feel the same way. I've really got this scripture figured out. No, I'm kidding. I'm teasing. It's vain to wake up early and worry about them. It's vain to stay up late worrying about them. To eat the bread of sorrows is to consume pain and hurt, offense, sorrow, worry. You can't do that for them. I have to trust the Lord and entrust them to Him. My own personal anxiety, fear, and worry will do nothing for them and will only steal from me. Remember, Mom and Dad, children are your heritage. They are a blessing from the Lord. They are the fruit of your womb. When I think of fruit, I think of sweet, messy, and sticky. The amount of time it takes to grow fruit, the work it takes to harvest fruit. Children are sweet and messy. They seem to always be sticky. And it takes an incredible amount of time to bring forth a good harvest. Hopefully at 42, my parents feel like they've got some of that harvest. And it's not too sticky anymore. The psalmist goes on to say, children are like arrows. Think about an arrow and its purpose. I brought, I don't shoot a bow and arrow, but my my kid does. Uh, I don't know, this is like probably supposed to be some sort of backpack. Uh, but this is a quiver, and these are arrows. And I figured I should show you one. Um, this had all kinds of weapons in it. I made him take out of it. <laughs> Have you ever looked at an arrow before? I, I really haven't until I was preparing for this message. We shoot them, right? Like, you know, you have your bow and arrow and... Every time I've tried to shoot one, I slap my wrist and it hurts real bad and then I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm bringing a gun to the bow and arrow fight. (laughs) Welcome to Texas. An arrow has purpose. They're straight until something happens to them. They have a head and there's all different kinds of heads you can put on an arrow and each head has its own purpose. It serves to do something different. They all have what I call fins. They're called fletchings to stabilize the flight path. As parents, we aren't creating the head. You need to understand that. The purpose of the arrow is created by the Lord. Yes, it's interchangeable to us, but you need to understand you don't get to create the head. That's the Lord's responsibility. And so as much as you are shooting the arrows of your children, you're not creating their purpose. The Lord created their purpose. But we are creating the fletchings and the fins that will help stabilize them. As parents, we have to recognize that it's the fletchings that will do the work when they leave us. Happy is the man who has many arrows. Happy is the man who has many children. They will not be ashamed. They're going to do dumb things. They're going to do things you don't agree with and you have no control over. They're going to make decisions that you would never make. They're going to go places you would never go. They're going to do things that you don't even know about. Yeah, 
that one hurts. But it's true. When you shoot them, it's the fletchings that you have prepared that will help them get to where they need to get to. Parents, you must be intentional. Honestly, as I now have two adult children, I wish I had more time to input into the head. Because I want to direct their purpose. I'm a control freak like that. Sometimes I'm just hoping the arrow of the head stays screwed on. <laughs> this comes unscrewed pretty easy. It's true. Larry's laughing because it's true. Look, that's already off. Seriously, I would love to direct the purpose and intention and calling, but I have to trust the Lord for the most important part of the arrow. Proverbs 16.9 says, A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. John 15, verse 16 says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Mom and dad, it doesn't matter how old your kids, your kids are, you did not choose them. The Lord chose them, and he appointed them. And they're going to go and bear fruit, and their fruit should remain. Whatever you ask the Father in his name, he will give you these things I command you that you love one another. So you don't have purpose over the head. You don't have, I'm sorry, you don't have input over the head. You don't have input over the purpose. But you do have input over the fletching. And there's three here on this particular arrow. And I want to give you three things that I think this morning would help them shoot straight where they're supposed to go. And the first is this. Teach your children to love the word. Joshua 1.8 says, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Teach your children to love the word. Second Timothy 3 says, But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood, it says from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So as you are shooting your arrows, as you are raising your children and you're helping to direct these fletchings, the first thing that I want to tell you is teach them to love the word. And it doesn't matter how old they are right now, teach them to love the word. The second is, teach them to be humble. Jeremiah 9.23 says, Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, let not the rich man glory in his might, nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me. Me is capitalized. It's God the Father. And I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these I delight, says the Lord. James 4, 6 says, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the humble. I'm sorry, the proud, but gives grace to the humble. The first is teach your children to love the word. The second is teach them to be humble. And the third one is trust God and don't live in fear. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Psalms 27, I'm sorry, 28 verse 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices and with my song I will praise him. The Lord is their strength and he is the saving refuge of his anointed. Isaiah 26, 3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah, the Lord, is everlasting strength. Teach your children to love the word. Teach them to be humble. And teach them to trust the Lord and not live in fear. If you haven't been doing this, start. Just start small. Maybe your children are grown. Start. Start small. Maybe your children are little. I have a three-year-old and I have a 21-year-old. Start. It doesn't matter where 
you are as a parent. It doesn't matter what your relationship is like with your children at the moment. It doesn't matter how holy and spiritual you think you are. Start. Start small. Pray for them. Ask them if you can pray for them. Model it. You get in the Word. You read your, you read your Scriptures. Show them what it looks like to love the Word of God. You be humble. Apologize where you need to apologize. Give God glory where He helps you. You didn't do it. God helped you. Be vocal about your personal relationship with Jesus because it's how they learn. They don't have the experiences you do. And so when you model your experiences, the good, the bad, and the ugly, they're learning. And when they walk into their own life experiences, they'll at least have some head knowledge of what happened with mom and dad, and it will produce faith in them. Because if he did it for you, then they will know that he can do it for them. Model it. Don't make your relationship with the Lord private. It's, we do that in our Western culture. We like to make our prayer closet if we have one, how we actually live all of our faith. And I would suggest to you this morning, your faith is not supposed to be private. There are times your faith is private. But with your family, your faith should be very public. Be honest, vocal, and intentional to share with your kids, young and old. And remember, it's never too late to start. All kids are arrows, and you get to launch them how you want to launch them. Finally, here in just a second. If you need to move from teacher or trainer to coach, do it. That's really hard. When they're under 18 and they're living in your house and you can tell them what to do or you'll beat them, take away their car, or take away their phone, whatever the, the consequences is, would be, you are teacher and trainer. Moving to coach is difficult. I got it right some of the time. I didn't get it right some of the time. My children, I don't know. Somebody said you need to pay for their therapy till they're 25. I don't know. I don't know how long that is, but um, coaching is is difficult when it's your kids. When you've invested as much time as you've invested emotionally and spiritually and financially and and just life. <coughs> Be able to just say, okay, you're in the game now, and I'm here on the sidelines. I'm going to yell and I'm going to scream the plays. I'm going to yell and scream, this is what you need to be doing. I can even draw up the play that I know will lead to you winning the championship. But if you choose to run the play differently, or you think you know better than me, I'm just the coach at this point. Moving from teacher, trainer to coach is hard. But you have to remember, it's not in vain. I want to go back and I'm going to reread the, the very first scripture, Psalms 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, in, interchange your family there. Unless the Lord guards your family, the watchmen, mom and dad, you stay awake in vain. It's vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. A fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior, so are the children of one Jew. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies of the gate. Last thing, and then I'm going to pray. Maybe you don't have kids. Maybe you were never able to have kids. You're not excluded from this. You're not. We parent in the faith all the time. And in the same fashion that I believe Deuteronomy 6 is spoken to all of the children of Israel, teach them to love the Lord their God with all of their heart, soul, and strength. Teach them four times a day. You hear me say it every week. It's, 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 a, it's a corporate call. It's not an individual mom and dad. It's part, of, part just mom and dad. 
but it's to the corporate entity of the children of Israel. All one million people, or however many it was, were all standing there at the same time. And he didn't say mom and dad. He said, you, you, all of you, I need you to help parent my kids. They don't like that. I need to help parent your kids. I'm not referring to, you don't discipline my kid. That's my job. I'm not going to discipline your kid. That's your job. I'm not going to raise your kid. It's not the church's job to teach principles and life skills. It's our job to come alongside you and enhance the life skills and the principles that you're teaching your kids. Don't drop your kid off and say, save my kid. We can't do that. But I'll partner with you. I'll speak life over your kids. I'm going to encourage them. None of what you did as a parent is in vain. And nothing, nothing, listen, the Lord's grace and mercy, he covers the mistakes. I got them. And if you don't raise your hand, if I were to ask, you're a liar. You have them too. So you would. Listen, it's incredible to be able to walk with family. It's incredible to bless our kids, the youngest to the oldest. What we do now is we shoot them. (laughs) Both ways. You shoot them. I'll shoot you if you do something stupid. And I'm shooting you to be all that God's intended you to be. Um... I want to pray. If you're, if you are 18 or under, would you stand? If you're under, if you're 18 or under, will you stand? Okay. Lord, I pray for these young men and young women. I pray for our future. These are the young men and young women that are going to be leading us. These are the young men and the young women who are still trying to figure out what you're calling them to be, what the head of that arrow is supposed to be. These are the young men and women who some the drawstring of the bow has already been pulled back, and they are about to be launched. And some, they're still sitting in the quiver, waiting to even be put on the bow. But Lord, you have a plan and a purpose for every one of these You have incredible things in store for them that will take them beyond what their parents have done. Lord, you said in your word that we would do even greater things than you. That's what you actually said in regards to the quantity, the amount that we would do for you. Lord, I pray that our children will do even greater things than us as parents. That their relationship with the Holy Spirit would be incredible they would have the gifts of the Holy Spirit function in them and flow through them to where they are seeing people healed, where they are functioning in the prophetic, where they're walking in in all of the gifts, not just one of the gifts or some of the gifts, but they're functioning and walking in all of the gifts so that they can go and win this next generation for you. Lord, give them the words to speak. Give them the boldness and the courage to stand strong and protect them and guard them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, sit down. I'm almost done. I promise I'm almost done. If you're a parent, actually if you're an adult, stand up. All the kids stay sitting down. Yeah, you have to be able to make mac and cheese. Okay. I'm going to pray for you and then we're leaving. Sometimes. Lord, every person that's standing is being tasked with raising those kids that were just standing. Some it's parenting, some it's grandparenting, some it's a mother or father in the faith. But in whatever capacity that we will interact with the children of this next generation, I pray that we would understand our role, our responsibility is to help keep the arrow to be able to fly straight by adjusting the fletchings. Lord, let us teach them that the word of God 
is the most important thing. Let us teach them to be humble before you, and let us teach them to trust in you and to not fear this world. Lord, if we can, if we can figure out those three things, if we can help teach those three things, if we can help model those three things, we will see a culture and a world change for you like never seen before. Lord, your word doesn't return void. Your word is alive and it is active. Your word is what will change the future. And so I pray that we would help equip these arrows to fly the way you want them to fly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Let me remind you, uh, we have to go through the countryside parking lot when we leave today. There should be somebody out there helping us uh, direct because of the driveway down there. Have a great week, everybody. Be blessed.